What is up YouTubers and lovers of budget cars and bikes? Welcome back to another video for 2021 and a tiny little project I picked up around about four weeks, three or four weeks ago. Um, again, this is another one of those little salvage things because I got bored and uh, it popped up. And I, to be honest, I have looked at these little Volkswagen Polos in the past and thought, you know, well, let's have a look at one and see what it's all about. After trying the Volkswagen Golf, which we did oh, last year, I think I'll put a link in to that up here somewhere. Um, I wanted to try another VW because you may have noticed on the channel, there's not a lot of VWs that we've done. And I do like them and they are incredibly popular. And I wanted to check another one out in that respect, you know. And I do like the Polo. Uh, especially the GTI and this new kind of facelift model although this is a 2007 it is the facelift model so you get the better lights uh, the kind of upgraded grille the spotlights at the front because this is the 1.2 petrol sport uh, well they call it an S I'm assuming that means for sport because it comes in a little uh, two door this one does at least and it gets better wheels and they tend to be slightly better colors now you may notice there is this kind of waviness on the paintwork here uh, I don't know if it'll show up. I imagine it probably will do. Now, that's all down to me. <laughs> I stupidly decided I was going to give it a machine polish. And as you can see, I didn't do a very good job of it. Um, I've just picked it up now after a couple of days. It's been in the garage. I'll talk to you about that in a minute. And it's absolutely bloody filthy. You know I me. Mean? Normally, I would have my cars looking really, really nice by now before I make the video for you but uh, it's bloody filthy we had a big rainstorm and it was obviously parked outside the garage overnight and it <laughs> I did polish it I promise you but um, these little wavy things here as you can see down the side that was just from the polishing wheel so now I'm gonna have to kind of get in there and really kind of cut that back I guess because it does look a little bit odd anyway I digress the car uh, 2007 1.2 petrol a little three pot and it's got 101,000 miles now I bought this from my usual kind of uh, all Auction reclamation kind of salvage yard place. Um, I actually only paid, wait for it, I paid £425 for this car with 100,000 miles on it, uh, 2007, and I thought that was a bloody bargain. Now, bearing in mind, we've got the fees, we've got the, so I'll get out of that sunshine because it is a early morning here, so we'll go around here a bit. Um, there's the fees and there's the delivery and then there's the tax and all that kind of crap that goes in on top. So, to my door, let's stay at the back of that bloody thing now. To my door, this cost me, I think it was about 650 quid all in which pissed me off a bit because i paid a third on top again of the price of the car just to kind of you know for their fees to get it to my house etc etc which as i say was a bit of a kick in the teeth that's better the sun's gone now um, <laughs> the car looks a bit better um so yeah 650 quid to the door on the premise that it needed a new front bumper the guy, when he actually pulled up outside my house with it on a truck, even said himself, oh, just stick a new bumper on there, mate, and you're good to go. At which point I suddenly noticed that both the headlights, which was a real, real pisser because you couldn't see it, both these headlights here were perfectly intact, apart from the fact that the tabs here, here, and underneath here were all snapped on both sides. So I had to find two sets, uh, well, a set of headlights, two headlights, and I found a guy selling two for 65 quid all in. They're not the best. I mean, he did say that one's all right, but he did say that this one over here is a little bit, you know, could do with a polish. I've polished it as much as I'm going to bother bloody polishing, if I'm honest, because I have absolutely pissed off with this car, if I'm honest. Um, because it wasn't just a bumper, as I said. I mean, we, I managed to get a bumper, and then I had to get the two headlights, and then I got the slam panel as well. Both the grills for the uh, spotlights at the bottom here, the fog lights, they were missing, so I had to get them as well. As I said, the slam panel, which was really odd because it's a plastic one, so it just shattered. There was a thousand pieces in and amongst all this bumper here. So when I took the bumper off, the original one, it was just everywhere. There was bits of plastic everywhere. It was a complete bloody disaster. So I ordered up another one, brand new, 65 quid, couldn't get the bonnet shut. Really, really weird. I managed to get everything in. The rad was all right. The air conditioning um, rad was all right. But I couldn't get the bonnet to shut. So I called my guy who did some work on the little Ford KA, which I'll link in up here. Um, he managed to get that bonnet sorted out for me. And he's very local. So he popped over and he said, no, no, it's not the um, bonnet. It's a slam panel. Even though there was a, an ever so slight, I mean, you could barely see it. A little crease in the original bonnet just here. And you, you could barely see it, but the bonnet wouldn't go down. And I wasn't sure um, if it was the bonnet or the slam panel he said no no it's definitely the slam panel it's obviously a chinese pattern part uh, send it back so i took him at his word sent it back it cost me 30 quid by the way to send the bloody thing back and then ordered another one which only cost 30 quid so that was half the price of the original one so it swings and roundabouts anyway fitted that back on bonnet still wouldn't shut up guess what it was the bonnet 
So I had to then go and buy a bloody bonnet. Now, this is where the pisser came in because I bought this bonnet, it cost me 90 quid, ended up with a scratch here, a scratch here. There was little kinks in the top of here as well. The, the same company sold me this bonnet, uh, this bumper rather here. That was a complete bloody joke because it's been painted. I mean, you may even be able to see it on the camera here. It's been blown in on this corner here. So you look at the difference there. So this that obviously came off a damaged car. They said, oh, well, sorry, we didn't notice that. And I said, well, look, come on. It's got a scratch here, a scratch here, a couple of kinks up here. The bumper's completely destroyed. You've had 195 quid out of me. Give me 50 quid back as a, par a partial refund and we'll call it quits. They gave me 25 quid and told me to piss off, basically. So uh, won't be using them again. You know, these VW breakers, hint, hint. Anyway, so eventually we managed to get all this sorted out. New bonnet, new bumper, new lights, new uh, slam panel, bolted everything back up together. And for the life of me, I cannot get these little corners here to fit in properly. That is literally the very best I've managed to do. And I spent two days, trust me, trying to get them back on. I had a chat with the guys on the forum and they said what you really need is somebody each side so they go in absolutely identical at the same time. Now the problem is, I don't know if you can spot it here, but if you look down the side here of this light, there's no gap. And then if you look down the side of there, you can actually see daylight through there. So I got a feeling there's something else going on down there that I don't know about. And this car is really done for me, basically. I paid 650 for it to my door. It was 100 quid for the bonnet, 100 quid for the bumper, 65 quid for the lights, 35 quid for the slam panel, 20 quid for these bloody little grills down here. I serviced it, put a new air filter in it. So that was another 50 quid. I actually had to spray this wing mirror cover here myself, which looks crap now, but it's actually not a bad job. The wheels were so bad, you wouldn't believe it. If you go onto my Instagram, which is on the banner photograph uh, for the YouTube site, go onto my Instagram and you'll see how bad these wheels were. And I've actually sprayed them back up. I tried to rub them back as much as I could. And trust me when I say they look a lot better than they bloody did. And I've got some center caps coming as well, so don't worry about that. I also sprayed the drums uh, at the back here, uh, just in a black hammerite. And I did the caliper uh, each side here as well, just to make it look a little bit less crappy. Good tires all around. So anyway, at that point, the car owed me roughly a grand you know because i literally spent about 400 quid getting it to this state but off we go for an mot and i get a nice call back and well i'll admit it basically as soon as i drove it i realized there was a problem with the brakes i was hoping it was possibly just needing braking um as in the, the brake the bleed the brakes as it were and i get a phone call from the mot station saying no it's the abs pump you'll have to get a new one <sighs> So, £262 for that, just to get it through the MOT. So as it stands, today, with a brand new MOT from today, with no advisories, 1260 quid. And I think when you know where we're going with this, how much is it worth? About 1260 quid. So I've basically done all of this for nothing. I would have made the same money if I'd have just stayed in bed and kept my money in my bank account. But you cannot win them all in that respect. You know, you're going to have a loss at some point, And this was it. And there was no way I could have possibly have known that the ABS pump had gone. There was no way to see from the pictures that the lights needed replacing because the tabs are all broken. And no, they don't do a repair kit. There was no way to know that the bumper wasn't closing properly because all the pictures they, sh they show you on the salvage site always uh, with the bonnet slightly lifted. So it just looked normal. But as I said, you know, at the end of the day, there's winners and losers and this is a loss. So if I don't look, I mean, if I'm honest, if somebody came along today and said, look, Dan, here's a grand, I'll drive it away. I'd probably take it. Just take the hit and move on because I made that kind of money on the Ford car. I made a couple of hundred quid on that. So, you know, ultimately both those cars, all that work, nothing, nothing, not a thing. But you live and learn. If you're going to buy an older car, make sure it's got an MOT because there is no way of knowing what's happened in that 12 months since that last MOT in that respect you know you don't know what's happened what's going to need replacing so either budget for that or make sure it's got an MOT ideally so what's it like <laughs> now I've bitched about the car and what the problems I've had with it are what is the car actually like it's great I got, I'm really impressed with it I took it out yesterday for a 25 mile drive I got a day's insurance on it from that cover company again. Again, thank you very much to the guys that recommended that. It saved me so much bloody hassle. Uh, it cost me 10 quid, I think, for three days insurance. Brilliant. So I took it out for a 25-mile drive yesterday, and it drove beautifully. It is so cathedral quiet in there. You would never know you are in a 14-year-old 1.2 petrol Volkswagen. The doors close with a reassuring thunk. It goes through the gears really nice. The gear stick and the gear change is really notchy and nice. You know, real sporty kind of aspect to that. The steering wheel, we'll, we'll get inside in a minute. The steering wheel feels great in your hand. Yet there's no road noise. There's no rumbling. There's no wind noise. It's a great little car. 
you know, and you could do a lot worse for 1,200 quid, let me tell you, you know, because at the end of the day, it's got a 12-month MOT on it with no advisories. It's a lovely colour, this gunmetal grey. The wheels don't look too bad now. That's probably one of the better ones that I did down there. Again, have a look at the Instagram photographs and you'll see how bad they were. Uh, four nearly new tyres. We'll get in and have a little look. Let's see if we can get the boot first and have a look at that. How bloody dirty this car is. That's pissed me off. Spent a day polishing it. Nice, relatively spacious boot. Uh, part of the shelf is actually here, which is always a bonus. And you get a full-size wheel with all the tools kit and the uh locking wheel nut key thingy is in there as well which is a hell of a bonus this was actually broken just down here this you might be able to see where i plastic welded that because it was all flopping about everywhere and lo and behold uh, this little nugget thingy here was just sitting down there so i just glued it back on uh so that was that solved let's have a little look inside this beauty interior i love this interior i think it's really really funky this kind of multi-colored Typical Volkswagen check effect, as it were. If you look at the GTIs, they've got that kind of tartany thing going on. And I think this is kind of reminiscent of that. The rear seats hardly look like they've ever been sat in, to be fair. Isofix, obviously. Five-speed manual. Um, I've got some mats coming as well. Let's jump inside and have a little look. I did actually give this a really, really good clean. Um, it stink, well, it stank of cigarettes. Somebody, whoever owned this before, was obviously a big smoker. And it absolutely stank. All down here was just mould, all in these crevices here, all up and round here. I forgot to do this, but that'll give you an idea of how bloody horrible this car was inside. It was just grody. So it took a half a day to do that. The headlining is a little bit grody as well, which there's not much I can do about that, to be fair. But generally speaking, I think it's a nice little place to be. You know, you get your CD player. It's obviously got air con as well. There's the MOT stuff, as I said, I just picked it up. Uh, no rips and tears in the carpets, it's all good. Uh, electric windows, electric and heated wing mirrors. I had to get in all these little crevices with a baby bud and cleaner on there and pull all this crap out of here and wash it. It did have an engine management light on as well. Uh, the mill light was on when I bought it, which I knew about because it showed that in the picture. Plugged it in, it was running lean on bank one, but after a good drive down the motorway, it's never come back on. So, you know, happy days. Um, I reset the service light myself because I've just serviced it. Front fogs, as I said, uh, just a great little car. Heated rear screen, heated front screen as well, I believe, on these. Um, there is a tiny, tiny, tiny little chip just down here somewhere, but they didn't pick up on it on the MOG, thank God. But again, you know, I think this is a nice little car inside, you know, and it, you know, the bolster could be a bit better for a sport edition of this car, but, um, oh, and this, the world's biggest bloody cup holder. Look at this bad boy. <laughs> I've never seen anything like that. The world's weirdest looking cup holder. But, you know, it probably won't. Well, I've probably broken it now saying that. There we go. Let's stick that back in, he says confidently. All right, we'll leave that for a minute anyway. <laughs> and we'll have a little look under the bonnet. Ugh. Not that there's much to see, to be fair. It's just a little three pot, 1.2 petrol. Very economical, of course. Um, I haven't had a chance, if I'm honest, to check the uh, MPGs on it. You can do that yourself, guys. You know, just Google it. But tidy, very, very tidy. Obviously, I've cleaned up this kind of area down here. There's the new slam panel and there's the new bonnet. Uh, but generally speaking, it's good. There's no real rust issues. Not on the top of the st uh, strut towers, nothing like that. It's a nice little car, isn't it, I think, really. And to be honest... If I'd have gone to see it, I probably wouldn't have bought it because I would have seen that the lights uh, needed replaced and I would have seen the bonnet was screwed. I would have seen all these other little things and I would have gone, ah, screw that. I mean, I won this by a tenner because there was another guy bidding against me and we got up to, I think it was 450, and I said, ah, oh, screw it, I'm not going above that. And I thought, no, okay, well, I'll put in 470. And I was kind of almost hoping that he put in 490 or 500, and he didn't, and I won it. And I kind of wish I hadn't. But it's, it's a nice little car. I'd have another one. I'd love to try the GTI version of this, because I know they're rapid. And, you know, generally speaking, for a 14-year-old car, I think it's great. Um, for the money, I mean, even if I got 1250 for it, I'd call that a win. And I think somebody else would have had a, you know, would get a really nice little car here for 1250. As I said, 100,000 miles, chain driven as well, so no belts to worry about. Just got a brand new MOT, oil change, filter change, uh, air filter change, spark plug change, all that kind of nonsense. It's a great little car, isn't it? I think 1200 quid. 
all day long. Now, as I said, chances are I'll probably end up taking a hit on this realistically because it is a cat N. Um, I've seen these at dealers for over two grand, um, but lower miles, better condition, I would say, um, and obviously not being crunched. And I need to get my money back out of this because there's a couple of cars coming up tomorrow that I do need to, uh, well, I don't need to buy them, but I'd like to get something different. I'd like to get it off my driveway purely because it's caused me so much bloody hassle. I've basically done the last two cars, the Ford car, okay, and this for nothing. But it's all good experience. I've now taken the entire front end off two different cars. Um, a plastic one and a metal one, slam panel, all that kind of stuff, lights. I've learned a lot, again, you know. Um, and I take that kind of experience forward when I buy the next car in the respect that I wouldn't... Um, I'd be hesitant, shall we say, to buy an older car um, that hasn't got an MOT because you just don't know what you're getting into in that respect um, and you could end up finding yourself in a world of trouble but generally speaking would I recommend it bloody hell yes I would definitely I in some ways prefer this to the Ford KA which is five years newer um, with the same kind of engine and horsepower and uh, economical kind of aspect um, I actually prefer this because it feels much better than it is in that respect you know you feel like you're in a more, a more than a 1200 quid 14 year old car I would recommend it definitely uh, highly and especially in this color I love this gunmetal gray anyway Anyway, that's my little bitching over about the latest mistake I've made <laughs> buying salvage cars. But as I said, it's all experience and it's not exactly the end of the world, is it? You know, it owes me 1250 1260 quid. It's been an experience and I'll, I'll probably lose a couple of quid, but hey, ho, hopefully I'll make it back on something else. Anyway, uh, that's it for now, guys. If you haven't subscribed and you like this kind of stuff, then consider subscribing. If you could give the video a thumbs up, that would really help the channel to grow. And um, if you've got any suggestions on what you'd like, me to review drop it in the comments you know leave any kind of comments you like if you've got one of these then you've got any questions or advice for me then again drop that in the comments i'm happy to answer any questions and comments um and as i said if you haven't subscribed consider doing that because that'll help the channel grow as well and hopefully it means i can buy some better cars <laughs> all right guys listen take care be safe and uh, you'll see me in the next video three or four weeks all right bye bye now